how to uh, give to your children and uh, you understand how to do good things to your children and uh, Jesus told us this using this kind of an example telling us how many people in the world no matter how much evil they are but they always do good things to their people even uh, worse people even as worse as Hitler definitely there are some people he did good things to them and you may ask yourself now you people being evil us as human beings being people of no thought if we understand very well how to do good things to our people how much more do you think Jesus who has called us who is righteous will do to us in heaven Jesus said in Matthew 7 11, If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your Father, which is in heaven, give good things to them that ask him? How much more? There is so much that God is going to do. And he's going to give us because we are his children. He's going to reward us. He's going to reward us in heaven. And you see, God is the rewarder. It's not men. You see, most people, it's is like they're working for men. It's like you're working to be noticed. Is when you preach to somebody, you want to see, uh, has that person realized that I've made him, you know, uh, understand the gospel? Has that person understood this and that? It's, it's like you, you, you're trying so much to get men's justification. But you're not working for men. The Bible tells us who we're working for. We're working for God. Colossians 3, uh, 23, it tells us something here about who we're working for and why we need to focus. Why we need to focus. All right? Uh, the Bible says, And whatsoever you do, do it heartily as to the Lord, and not unto men, knowing that, of the Lord you shall receive the reward of inheritance for you serve the Lord Christ. Alright? You will receive a reward of inheritance. There is something that you will inherit. And God is telling you, as you do everything that you do, don't do it as if you are doing it for men. Do it knowing that there is an inheritance in heaven which you are bound to receive. But he that doeth wrong shall receive for the wrong which he has done. And there is no respect of persons. God has no respect of persons. Whether you are a bishop, you are a what, you are a, 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 just a small person there in the church, or you are just a minister of the gospel, you are just this and that. He is not a respect of men. He will reward you according to your intentions. Because he is a rewarding father. He is a rewarding father. And... Uh, Jesus promises us that he's coming with rewards. He's coming to give us rewards. And his rewards are going to be so much that some people will be wondering, I wasted my time with the things of the earth and pushing vanities and missed all this just because of 30, 40 years that I was living. I missed all this for thousands and thousands of years. All these rewards. See what Jesus says. In Revelation 22, 12. Jesus says this in Revelation 22, 12. He says, And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me, to give every man according, to, according as his work shall be. What will your work be? How much have you worked for Jesus so that you receive his rewards? He's coming with his rewards. And he wants to give to all those who have been working for him. And if you're a minister out there or you're a saved person and you're sitting down, you're just saying, okay, I know, I know, I got saved, that's all. And you're not working for him. There's something that you're missing, my friends. There's something you're missing. You're missing a lot. And Jesus continues and even says in Matthew 5.12, Matthew 5.12, Jesus says something else also. Concerning the rewards. He says, Rejoice and, and be exceeding glad. For great is your reward in heaven. 
For so persecuted the prophets, they the prophets, which were before you. The prophets were persecuted before you. You remember in the time of Nero, so many people were eaten by lions. Others were, you know, so many bad things happened to Christians before you. And all this happened and they persevered because they knew great is the reward. It's the reward in heaven. How much more are you willing to persevere persecutions? Are you willing to persevere things? Are you willing to sit down and just tell God it doesn't matter no matter how much people hate on me? How much people uh, do wrong things to me? Even if they nail me on the cross, no problem. I will persevere because great is my reward in heaven. And Jesus says, rejoice and be exceedingly glad. That's why you see Peter and the apostles and the other people and Paul, they used to rejoice so much when they are persecuted for Christ's sake. Right now I see so many people, whenever something wrong happens to them, they, they, they start saying, oh, I don't believe there is God. This could not have happened if, uh, the, if God was living. Then this could not have happened to me. Why was this happening if God really existed? It's not about that. Even if your church is destroyed and what happened, don't worry. Don't worry. Jesus told you, tells you, do not fear persecutions. You just do your work. Because great, great is your reward in heaven. So when they persecute you, what should you do instead? What should you do when they persecute you? The Bible tells us to love our enemies. Love your enemies. Love those who persecute you. Love them. Don't hate them. Do not hate those who persecute you. You know there are people who say, return to sender. I have had so many churches, especially in, here in Kenya and different places of Africa. When somebody does something wrong to you, you hear, return to sender. We, we pray what, what they have done to us, it goes back to them in Jesus' name. No, that's not the plan of God. He does not say you return to sender. He says, love your enemies. Love your enemies and do good and lend. Hoping for nothing gain. How many times have you lent to someone who you know, this one he'll never give me back, but I've just lent to him. And your reward shall be great when you lend and you help the, your enemies, your friends and your enemies. And you shall be the children of the highest, for he is, he is kind unto the unthankful and to the evil. God makes rain to rain for both the good and the if, evil. He doesn't uh, say, okay, this person is evil, so there will not be rain. No. He, God is always merciful. He's, he says, be therefore merciful, as your father also is merciful. Love those who persecute you. Pray for them. All your enemies. Because that is how you will be Christ-like. You see, the word reward, I was just uh, going to the word reward. Reward appears about 80 times, 80 times, occurs about 80 times in 78 verses in the King James Bible. Why, why, why this? It shows you, this is to encourage you and tell you how many times you have, we have promises of rewards in heaven. Every time we have rewards, we are promised there are rewards that are waiting for us. The small, small things here, here on earth where God maybe provides for you, he takes care of your family, maybe he heals you if you're sick. Those are just minor things. But there are a lot of rewards in heaven. Rewards, rewards, rewards. You see, he's, he's talking about rewards in, in so many times to show you that there are so many things which are waiting for you. You see, at the judgment seat of Christ, this is the judgment of Christians. Christians will go through this judgment, which is called the judgment seat of Christ, where Jesus will be judging the saints. Judgment will start from the church. And uh, what you'll be judging is not if you're going to die or not, if you're a sinner or not. No, that has already been paid. You cannot lose your salvation. But you'll be judging you according to what you did for him. Your work will be tested, will be balanced. Did you do this for the sake of Christ or did you do it for the sake of you? And your reward will be given. In 1 Corinthians, 
uh, 3, 13, Paul tells us about this judgment seat of Christ and he explains to us how it will be. He says, every man's work shall be made manifest. You know, it will be, it will be brought forth. For the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire. It will be passed through fire, your things, your works, everything that you've done. And the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. If any man's work abide, which he has built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. If you did with the heart and mind and thought of doing it for God, you will receive a reward. If any man's work shall be burnt, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved, yet so is by fire. So the Bible says, you will not lose your salvation if your work was burnt, but you will lose your rewards. Your work will be burnt. Think about it. Think about it. Think about it. You're here and you've lost everything and you're seeing people are being rewarded. And Jesus is rewarding people. And you, you're there, you've gotten nothing nothing you'll be worried and crying and say oh why did i waste my time other people are now being rewarded they're being given different uh, 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 rewards for what they did for christ and of course i'll do another video not in very long probably in the next video showing you the five different crowns that you'll be uh, awarded by christ when you get to heaven because they are crowns of everything that you do if you uh, avoid temptation, if you're waiting for Christ, if you're preaching to others, if you're having persecutions, there are crowns for all that. There are rewards for each and everything that you've done. But all will have to be balanced. And it be seen. Were you, were you doing this for your sake or was it for the sake of God? You know, and you may ask, Keith, how will, uh, how will God know that this you did it? Uh, with a good intention or not you, you see many people think ah, but i can do this for for the instagram likes i can do this for facebook likes and you don't do it for god and you ask so how will he know the bible tells us something here the bible tells us in uh, hebrews hebrews uh, 4 verse 12 it tells us how god will know because of his word he, he, the Bible says, for the work of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and spirit, of the, uh, and spirit, and of the joints and marrow, and is a designer of the thoughts and intents of the heart. God designs your intents. Why you are doing this? Using his word. Because his word is very powerful. Is as a two-edged sword. His word. His word is very powerful. He's given his word. And he will test it using his word. And to see, were you doing this for the sake of uh, uh, just being uh, seen and things like that? Or were you doing it for the sake of God? He will test it using the word. His word. So you cannot escape. So if you're doing good things, you're helping the poor and uh, you're with your mobile phone there and you're trying to show how much you're helping the needy, how much you're doing this for the likes of Instagram and uh, Facebook and all that, it's all up to you. You've already gotten your reward. But in heaven, there are so many rewards. Please, please make sure you don't miss those rewards. And Jesus gives us an example. He gives us an example of two men who went to pray and he tells us through this example you can know how he understands your intentions of the art that these two guys who went to pray and Jesus tells us something about those two people now in the book of Luke Luke uh, 18 18 verse 10 it tells us about these two people who went to pray listen to this it's very very powerful uh luke 18 sorry i just wrote eight luke 18 uh from verse 10 jesus gives this example to tell us how we should do things now he says two men went up into the temple to pray two men went up to the temple to pray the one a pharisee you know a religious leader someone who just uh, you know he knows much a Pharisee was an example of someone who, who knows much. Remember Jesus was saying, 
the kingdom of heaven for you to enter you should be like a little child meaning you should almost you should be as innocent not not with all these vain babblings of how much you know no be a simple be a servant so using a pharisee he wanted to show us this guy was so much knowledgeable and yet he knew nothing two men went up into the temple to pray the one a pharisee and the other a publican the pharisee stood and prayed thus uh, with himself god i thank thee that i'm not as other men are extortioners unjust adulterers or even as this publican first i fast twice in the week i give tithes of all that i possess and the publican standing far off would not lift up so much as his eyes unto heaven but smote upon his breast saying god be merciful to me a sinner i tell you this man went down to his house justified rather than the other for everyone that exalted himself shall be abased or humbled and he that humbled himself shall be exalted now this story of this two guys who went to pray one was saying how good he is and of course it's good to be good he says he gives to the poor he gives tithes he, he you know he fasts and all those kind of things which are really good but god is not looking for how your intention are and how people see you out there but is exactly how you feel about yourself from inside how you tell god Please, God, have mercy on me. Help me as I preach to this person. Let you be seen, not me be seen in this preaching. Many pastors today and many uh, brothers and sisters today, when they preach to someone or when they do good to someone, they want to do to be seen how good they are. But God says, no, when you do, pray to God like this, this guy behind here who was praying and telling God, it's not about me. I know I'm. I can't do this by myself. It's not by my works. It's by your grace that you're saving me. It's not because of anything that I do. But this guy was saying, you're saving me because I've given tithes. I've done all the good things. I'm a good person. And this disputes and shows you that salvation is by grace through faith. And is not of works, lest anyone should boast. You see that example is shown very, very well. Now, I may ask you, where is your treasure? Because uh, we are all called by God to work for him, you know, in different ways. And we are all putting treasures for ourselves in heaven. Each and every time that we work, we are putting treasures for ourselves in heaven. And we have been called in different ways. Different ways. We, we are been called by Christ as his workmanship. Ephesians 2, 10, it tells us that we are not saved just to sit down. We are saved so that we can be his workmanship. We are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works which God has before ordained that we should walk in them. So you are not ordained just to get saved and sit down. No. Occupy and do whatever you can and gain some treasures for yourself in heaven. You know, some of us, you'll find that uh, there are some who are Bible teachers, like the way I'm explaining to you the Bible here. There are others who are not good in Bible teaching, they are good in preaching. You see, Bible teaching and preaching, they are two different things. Preaching motivates you to want to go and read the Bible and do things of God. Bible teaching expounds what the Bible is speaking about. There are others also who are, uh, who are comforters. You find whenever people are, are feeling low with the things of God and, uh, you know, they're, they're in distress in different things and uh, maybe they, uh, they have lost a loved one. There are people who are very good in comforting. There are good other people who are evangelists. They go to different places where uh, it, it's, it's very hard for pastors and other people to go and they evangelize. There are those who stand at the streets. There are those who preach on YouTube. There are those who preach on Facebook. There are those who preach one-on-one. -on -one. There are those who are church leaders, you know, the sevenfold ministry. And all of these people are putting treasures for themselves in heaven. So don't, don't look at your, at your work and say, you see, I don't have 1,000 people listening to me. I don't have a millions of people like the other people who are having. So their ministries are really big. No, what if God called you 
only for your family? What if God called you to preach only to your mother and your father? What if God called you to preach only to your neighbor? Are you going to say something different? Lay yourself treasures in heaven. God knows how he will be able to do it. So, when you see Jesus delaying his return, because there are so many people who are saying, Jesus is delaying. We want the rapture to happen right now. Yes, we all want the rapture to happen. But when you see he de is delaying for a day or two or three or for a month, you should thank him and tell him, God, thank you for giving me another opportunity to add more treasures for myself in heaven. Because after this, then that's it. So right now, people are laying treasures, laying treasures. And when you see another day gone, know that Jesus has given you an extra time to add more treasures for yourself in heaven. All right? Don't lay your treasures here. The Bible tells us about this. Matthew. Matthew 6.20. You see, many people are laying treasures here. They are trying to build this and build that. And I, I see how much money is used and wasted in building churches and building big, uh, you know, mega churches and things like that. Instead of empowering people to go out there and preach to others. It's not about just putting people in one, you know, place and telling them, sit down here, I tell you, I tell you, I tell you. No. Empower other people to go and preach. The Bible tells us, but lay up for yourself treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust does corrupt, where thieves do not break, though nor steal. For where your treasure is, there also will your heart be. If your treasures are in heaven, then, then you will lay your treasures there. If your heart is in heaven, you lay treasures there. But if your heart is all about here on earth, you'll be thinking about how do I build a, a big mega church? I'm not saying building mega churches are bad, but you'll be thinking in a carnal way instead of thinking in a heavenly way. You should be thinking about, let me empower more people to go and preach so that when they preach, as they get their reward, I'm also getting some commission from there because, you know, I also preach to those people and I empowered them and Probably, I'm, 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 not, I'm not dogmatic about this, but of course the people you preached to, they're also laying other treasures on you as well because it's, it's through your line you, you preached. And I believe that uh, in heaven, in heaven you'll also get rewards for each and every person that you brought to Christ. And every person who was brought to Christ through your ministry. So you may ask, how do we know that there are treasures in heaven? How, how do we know that there are treasures in heaven? You see, many people can say, okay, uh, you've said about treasures, but how can we be sure that they are there? How can we be sure? Remember Cornelius in the Bible? Cornelius was a good man. He was not a, a believer. He was not saved. He was just a good man. And God gave us an example of this good man who was uh, saved and we're also told about how God had seen his good deeds. Now, let me show you Acts. Acts 10, uh, verse 31. Cornelius, God sent uh, Peter to go and preach to him. And uh, before that, an angel had come to Cornelius and told him this. Cornelius, thy prayer is hard. And thine alms, alms are what? Gifts are held in remembrance in the sight of God. So God does see when you do good things to other people. When you do his work, you help his needy people. And you do what is uh, uh, right according to God. God does see. And he remembers everything that you do. And he will reward you because he's the rewarder. He's the rewarder of those who are true in his work. So Cornelius is a good example to show us that in heaven, God is remembering every good work that you're doing. So, what are some of the ways that we can work for Christ? Okay? What are some of the ways that we can work for Christ? We can work for Christ, uh, you know, through prayers, through preaching, through giving to the poor, uh, giving to the ministry, helping the sick, those who are in prisons. You, you see, you can work for God in so many ways. You can even be the one dusting the church and you're working for God. 
because when people come there they'll have a good time in the church and they, they will they will uh, 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 listen more and they will not be distracted by you know dust and things like that and they will listen and they will hear the word of god you can even be saying okay i don't know how i can preach i don't know how to preach i don't know how to do this but i can help different ministries which are pushing on the word of god there are so many people on youtube like the way we do here and probably some of them, they preach, but they don't have a way out on how to survive. You can preach, uh, touch them, and help them. Even at home, you can see a church, a pastor, who preaches so much, but he's, he is he's, uh, he's not able to feed his family and to do uh, what he's supposed to do. Or he doesn't have transport to go to different places. You can tell him, brother, I want to reach you, and I want to use that so that God can bless me for using you. You know, you can, you can touch God in so many ways. You can go to prisons and see the people who are there and they are desperate. There are so many people who are imprisoned, but they never did anything. Because the Bible tells us something here, before I come to what I just uh, shown you here. In Matthew 25, verse 34, the Bible tells us this. Then shall the king say unto them in his right hand, Come, you blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungered, and you gave me meat. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you took me in. Naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came unto me. Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when did we see you hungered and feed thee, though thirsty and give you a drink? When did we see you a stranger and took you in, or naked and clothed you? Or when did we see you in prison and came unto you? And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, inasmuch as you have done it unto one of the least of my brethren, you have done it to me. And God will reward you. He will tell you, you did all these things. You thought you were doing them for yourself. You, th you think that neighbor of yours that you, you fed him when he was hungry, you think you're doing it for him? No, you're doing it for me. Now here is your reward. Here is your reward. And the Bible tells us that the righteous people who have done all these good things and who God has seen their work, they will shine like the sun. They will shine like the sun. Do you know you will shine? The book of Daniel, Daniel uh, 12, 3. The book of Daniel 12, 3. It tells us about that day. And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament. And they, they that turn many unto righteousness as the stars forever and ever. You will be shining as the stars God will wipe every tear from your eye and you will shine like the stars and you'll be rewarded. He will hug you and he will tell you, here, my son, my daughter, you did this. You did it. You made it. I remember one a video of uh, Carter Conlon that I always watch from Times Square Church. He was saying a story about how they were traveling and, uh, you know, the journey was so long and uh, his grandchild was seated there, uh, there in the in the car, and uh, he was like almost crying and saying, "This this journey is too long." And Carter was telling him, "No, just hold on, just hold on. We are almost there. We are almost where we're going." And once they arrived, the child was the first one to get out of the car and tell his uh, granddad, "We did it. We did it." And I believe this is the same way that. You will be. After all the time that you cry and God tells you, hold on, hold on, hold on. It's just a matter of time. Just hold on. Hold on. Don't worry. You will do it. On that day, you'll wake up and just tell him, Jesus, I did it. Finally, by your grace, I did it. I arrived. I'm here. And you'll just, just think about that. So your rewards are waiting for you. And, you, and, and uh, if you're not saved, how are you going to get rewards? The only way you can get rewards is if you know Christ. And the only way you can know Christ is understanding the way of the cross. Is understanding what Jesus did for you at that cross. 
Jesus died for your sins according to the scriptures. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, that Jesus died for your sins. He was, he, he was killed. He died. God poured all his wrath on him so that you can have no wrath. For all the sins that you did, Jesus took them. He took them at the cross. He died for your sins according to the scriptures. And if you believe that Jesus died for your sins, then you will be saved. That's the only thing that you need to do. 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. It's all about how that Christ died for your sins, was buried and rose again according to the scriptures. His blood was shed for you. It was shed to replace your blood because without shedding of blood, there's no forgiveness of sins. So I hope this has been a blessing. Please share it to other people. You can also subscribe so that you can be checking more and more videos because I post many videos every day. Please, God, God bless you. God bless you and have a blessed, blessed time. See you in the next one.